Good morning. Good morning. I hope you're going to vote for Mr. Hackett's party. Uh, may I have your number? I'm afraid I don't have one. I don't live in Seekenden. Oh, what a pity. No, I'm just here to do a little sailing or fishing. Oh, I'm so sorry to have troubled you. Not at all. In some parts of the world, you get shanghaied or clubbed into voting. Or clapped in jail if you don't. But English elections, especially those for the local council, remain pleasantly sedate. Canvassing seems like, a, like an invitation to tea. Nothing so crude as the political hard sell, or even persistence. Simon, how are you? I'm fine. How's Seaton Dean's star reporter? <laughs> Still dreaming of Fleet Street. I didn't expect you till noon. Oh, I made better time from town than I expected. I stopped by the newspaper office. They said you were down here. Now, what's all this? <laughs> Doing your political duty? Father-in-law duty. I'm engaged to George Hackett's daughter. Jack? Ah, darling. Simon, I'd like you to meet Molly Hackett. Darling, this is the famous Simon Templar. <laughs> every second of it. I'm not. Oh, Dad, don't scowl so. People will think you're a bad loser. I just can't stand seeing Sam Padel with another year to milk the building boom cow. Shush. And I don't care who hears me saying it. You better go easy on that. Look at him. His worship and worshippers. <laughs> well, congratulations, Sam. You're home and dry again. Uh, who says dry? <laughs> 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 well, uh, excuse me. Excuse me. Congratulations, sir. Uh, thank you, thank you. Enjoying yourself, George? Fairly bulging with bonhomie tonight, aren't you, Sam? Oh, come off it. It was a fair fight, you know that. You lost, and I won. But never mind, you're still on the council. Yes, Sam. I am still on the council. And still ready to give us some good stiff opposition, eh? Even if we do always vote you down. My day's coming. No hard feelings. Right? What's the matter with Hackett? Whiskey and sour grapes. Oh, I think they want you to say a few words, Sam. Right. I'm ready. Time for the benediction, Your Worship. What's the matter, George? Jealous? Something tells me I've been here before. Well, you all know me. My ugly mug's in the paper often enough. But what's more important, I know you. Because if you'll forgive the commercial, Sam Padell has tipped coal in most of your backyards. And as mayor, I promise you I will continue to deliver the goods. Well said, sir. Now, You've seen a lot of changes here in Seaton, Dean, like this new civic centre we're building. And there are more changes to come. You've done me and the party proud. And we're going to do you proud in return, because we are determined to turn our town into the finest seaside resort on this coast. Yeah, yeah, yeah. For the benefit and the prosperity of all. Prosperity for the mayor! Yeah, yeah, this town's yeah, been yeah, built! Yeah, True, Sam Padel's a liar and a phony. One of these days, someone's going to sue you, Hackett. Spouting lies like this, they're not lies. Then why don't you shut up and go home? Oh, Dad, please, for heaven's sake. I'm, uh, I'm sorry that Councillor Hackett has had a few too many, but to show I bear no grudges, I'm going to invite him to have another. That's if he can still stand up. <laughs> Dad, 
how could you do it? It was easy. Sam Padel's a liar and a crook. Then go after him legally, but don't carry on like, a, like an hysterical schoolchild. You made a complete fool of yourself tonight. Don't you talk to me like that. Well, somebody has to. Do you realize what people will think? I don't give a hang what people think. There's graft involving public money and someone has to bring it to the surface. You said all that during your campaign and nobody listened to you. I couldn't prove it. Well, you have to prove it before you can hurl insults at people. Sam Padel would just pass off this outburst as sheer jealousy and liquor. I was not drunk. If you want to fight Sam, do it as a rational human being. Well, go after him at the Works Committee meeting tomorrow. That's how you'll get him down, not by, not by throwing hysterical temper tantrums in public. I lost my temper. I couldn't help it. I'm sorry. Oh, Dad, what am I going to do with you? I didn't mean to embarrass you. Oh, I know, but it's not me I'm worried about. Couldn't you use a little discretion? It's just that I get so angry, I have to lash out at people because... Oh, I suppose I still miss your mother. Yes, I... I know. A man's life's got to mean something. I've got to fight for the things I believe in. Oh, yes, but couldn't you curb the bulldozer tactics? I will. I promise. Harder, harder! Look, look, Joe, take a real swing. That's the stuff. No, you beat it. Sam, really, you oh, should what? encourage the boys to use their fists. <laughs> Why not? They'll never have to lift hundredweight bags of coal like I did. I want to make sure they grow up tough. Anyway, it's time you left. The car's here. All right. Bye, lads. See you tonight. <laughs> Back in harness. Yes. What's the matter? Well, the papers are full of what happened last night. I saw it. Hackett's just about cooked his goose this time. But why, Sam? Why does he say these dreadful things? Oh, very simple, love. George Hackett's eaten up with jealousy. And my job, this house. Well, shouldn't you issue, well, I don't know, some kind of statement? Saying what? Well, how we got this house, for instance. <laughs> wouldn't be bothered. You don't dignify this sort of filthy smear by taking it seriously. All the same people talk about how a coal merchant can afford to live the way we do. But what do you want me to say? That I've been lucky in the market? That businessmen like to give me inside tips because of my position? Anyway, why should I justify anything to a man like Hackett? He's a troublemaker and a drunk. And one of these days, I'm going to punch him in the nose. No, Sam. <laughs> don't worry. Yeah, I have to go. Works committee at 10. I suppose Hackett will be there. Mm -hmm. Don't worry. I'll handle him. The Civic Center's only half finished, and already it's costing double. Councillor, we can't control the English climate. <laughs> <laughs> we can control spending. And I said the plan to add on the exhibition hall is an extravagant folly. Is it? And what about all the sales conferences and trade fairs we shall attract in the winter? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Now, can't we get on with it, ladies and gentlemen? This is the third time we've discussed buying this extra land. Well, considering the price, what can you expect? We have to come to some decision. Well, why can't we redesign part of the centre to include this hall, if we must have it? Our architect has already explained that. But no doubt he'd be willing to do so again. To do that, we'd have to build upwards. And town and country planning laws forbid it. Now, if you're quite finished, Councillor, we would like to press on. But before I put it to the vote, perhaps the town clerk would just run over the details again. The area we require comprises roughly one and a half acres, at present occupied by a disused bottle works which would have to be demolished. After negotiating with the owners of the site, the Bellevue Development Trust, a figure of £173,000 is the agreed freehold. And I... Rigged! What? The price is rigged. Hadn't you better explain a remark like that? I'll be happy to. 
Six months ago, when the bottle factory closed, Waterman's Lemonades offered to sell this land to us at exactly half price. But we didn't want it then. Bellevue Development bought it. But only recently, only after this committee began to consider buying it. Are you suggesting there was a leak from here? I'll go further than that. It seems... Hackett, you've gone quite far enough both inside and outside this chamber. Who controls Bellevue Development? You think someone here has an interest? Yes. Who? Very conveniently, the company's records only list nominees. Well, that's quite common these days. And so are inflated prices whenever we choose a site for a school or a hospital. Usually a site we've no option but to buy. Hack it, that's enough. And invariably the land's owned by some trumped up company whose origins are impossible to trace. Shut up, hero, I'll throw you out. Try it. Quiet. Quiet. Councillor Hackett. You furnished the town clerk with one shred. Just one shred of evidence of corruption on this council and a proper inquiry will be held. But in the meantime, let me tell you something. I'm growing tired of these wild insinuations of yours. So far, I've refrained from taking any sort of legal action because your ridiculous accusations aren't to be taken seriously. But don't push your luck too far. I'm warning you. And now let's get back to business. We need this land to complete the Civic Centre. Can we have a vote? All those in favour of purchase? Thank you. I don't think we need bother to count those against. <laughs> <laughs> now, if there's no further business, I will accept a motion to adjourn. I so move. I second. Meeting adjourned. Well, I'm surprised the model didn't collapse under that crossfire. Missing the mayor's job seems to have sent Hackett right off the deep end. In all my years as town clerk, I've never heard anything quite so scandalous. Hackett's always had his knife into you, Sam. But now it's got a poison tip. Oh, the trouble is, if he keeps up that kind of ridiculous talk, people may start to believe him. Now, what are you going to have, Mr. Hackett? I feel like six doubles, Joe. Six doubles? I'll start with one. Yes, sir. Hey, good morning, Mr. Haggart. Hello, Jack. Good morning, Mr. Templer. Mr. Haggart. Have a drink with me. Nobody else will. Why? After your little speech last night? I've just made another. Same subject? Yes. How long do you have? Oh, half and half, thanks. Mr. Templer? Oh, the same for me, please. And two pints of half and half, Joe. Oh, yes, Mr. Haggart. Well, it seems everybody's mad at me this morning. Oh, that's politics. It's something a good deal murkier than politics, Mr. Templer. The colour of Sam Padel's coal. Mr. Hackett, do you have anything really concrete? Concrete? Yes. I'm getting it. Well, when you do have it, the Sentinel will be right behind you. Thank you, Joe. You're welcome, Mr. Hackett. Cheers. 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 Sam's just landed the town with another big bill. The cost of the bottle works site. You mean the deal's going through? And the mysterious Bellevue Company makes a gigantic profit. Uh, Jack, you were going to trace the former owner, Waterman. He's retired somewhere. To the grave. He died three weeks ago. Wouldn't you know it? Well, I've got to get home. Mr. Hackett, uh, another drink? No, thanks. I never had more than one before lunch. See you gentlemen later. Cheer up. Cheer up. Thank you. What's wrong with you? You blind or something? Oh, just a minute. You deliberately cut in front of me. You saw me a mile off, your stupid clot. Now hold it. You've been drinking. I can smell it. You're drunk. You're a liar. Yeah, go ahead. Hit me, you drunk and no good. Hey, hey, now hold it. He struck me, officer. First he damages me, car, and then he attacks me. All right, now calm down. Let me have your driver's license. It's the both of you. He, uh, has been drinking, officer. You can smell it. You're a dirty, rotten liar. Quiet. Have you been drinking, son? Well, Constable, I, I did have a scotch at the hotel. You see? He admits it. It's a fake! It's a put-up job! He's deliberately all right, tied up! All right, you can explain it in court. You're under arrest.
any more tests? No. Am I sober? Mm, completely. Would you say that I'm capable of controlling a car? Yes. But you're not capable of controlling yourself. George, I've been your doctor for ten years. I still don't understand you. What makes you do these crazy things? Jim, this is a frame-up. That accident was planned deliberately to discredit me. Oh, come now. You'll find out. George, you're going to be charged with assault. Why did you have to hit him? I felt like it. Oh, well, the best of British luck to you. Jim, do you know this character? His name is Maxim. He's a clerk who works on the Civic Centre building site. Oh. He is, is he? Listen, you're a good chap and I voted for you, but don't go around playing the fool. Leave politicking to me. You stick to medicine. I will. Perhaps I'll find a cure for pig-headedness. That looks very really promising, Miss Vosperer. Thank you. Anything like me? Mmm, it's good. Strong. This catches you admirably. Uh, will you excuse me if I interrupt for a moment, Miss Vosperer? Certainly. Thank you. Uh, here's the estimate for the town traders' dinner. I've suggested the catering should be 15 shillings per head, including drinks. Well, it seems a bit stingy, Alfred. Oh, well, last year there was a lot of overindulgence. Some of them are very old friends of mine. Make it a pound a head. It didn't work, Sam. Come again. You paid lackey, trying to frame me on a driving charge. What are you talking about? Who tipped you off? I was in the hotel bar. <laughs> He's crazy. Whoever it was heard me order six doubles, but I only drank one. See, a clever little scheme failed. I have never heard such tripe in all my life. I am growing sick and tired of you and your ravings. Sam, I'd better get you. You ought to see a doctor, man. You're sick. You've got some sort of persecution mania. You won't be wearing these much longer. Get out, Hackett, or I'll take them off this minute and kick you right across the town square. Gentlemen, gentlemen, please. Shut up. You're too stupid to see what goes on right under your nose. Out! Right now! Tomorrow, at the full council meeting, I'll get you. See me making ridiculous threats again? I'm glad you find it amusing. Grabbing microphones, car accidents, hitting people. You're becoming the town freak. Molly, that accident was a frame-up. Oh, Dad, please! And Sam was behind it. That means he's on the defensive. He's scared of me. I'm beginning to understand why. You should be put away somewhere. Don't be so rude. You've an absolute obsession about Sam Padella, not one shred of proof. Oh, I'm sick of it, and I don't want to discuss it anymore. Why must you be so quick-tempered? Why must I? Oh, you carry on like this, and Jack will break the engagement. Why? The heredity risk! Molly, come here. What's the matter? I've got it. I've got Sam where I want him. This letter proves it. Oh, fine. Take it to a lawyer. Take it to the police. Read it. Go on. Dad, once and for all, will you stop yelling to me about Sam Padell? It's all you've been doing for weeks. And I'm sick of it.
Dr. Yates, you were the deceased's personal physician, were you not? I was. You knew him well? Yes. Would you describe the deceased as a man with suicidal tendencies? Oh, definitely not. Would you describe his personality as stable? Well, uh, no. As unstable, then? Yes. He was an excitable and violent man given to unreasoning rages? Yes. You performed the post-mortem? I did. What did you find? Multiple fractures of the legs and spine. Death was instantaneous. Anything else? Yes, the deceased had not eaten for approximately eight hours, but the stomach contained a quantity of alcohol. How much? The equivalent of nine or ten doubles. Enough to have affected his sense of judgment? Yes. He was going far too fast. He just crashed into me. And afterwards? Well, he jumped out of the car and said it was all my fault. And he hit me. I could tell he'd been drinking. But at that time in the day, he said he'd only had one. Yes, the doctor examined him at the station and confirmed that he'd been drinking though not enough to make him unfit for driving. Constable, could you describe Mr. Hackett's manner at the time of the accident? Oh, he was in a rare state, sir. Angry? Well, he swung up Mr. Maxin again, said the whole thing was a fake and a put-up job. You mean that the crash had been caused deliberately? Yes, by me. He came bursting into the town hall with some cock and bull story that, well, that I'd put somebody up to framing him on a drunk driving charge. Was he violent? It didn't quite come to blows, fortunately. But he grabbed at my robes and went on shouting like, well, like a man who's had a few too many. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Before I stand down, I'd like to say something. George Hackett was my political opponent. So it was only natural he'd want to throw a bit of dirt to discredit me. That's politics, I'm afraid. But as civic leader, I should like to express publicly a deep sense of shock and grief at the loss of a fellow councillor. And a very hard-working one at that. Miss Hackett, this letter you speak of, what did your father say about it? Well, he said, as nearly as I can remember, I've got Sam where I want him. This letter proves it. This letter is not in your possession? No, I've looked everywhere. Did you read it? No. Why not? Well, I just didn't. Because you didn't take your father seriously? Well, no, not exactly. Miss Hackett, isn't it true that your father was deeply disappointed at losing the election? Well, naturally. But not to the point of suicide. Distressing though I know this must be for you. We must try to decide whether it was this or an accident. Or something else. I think at this point I should make it quite clear that the police have no reason to suspect foul play. Oh, I understand that. It's just that... Well, my father did lose his temper often and... He did get excited about things. But I just can't believe that he'd become so drunk as to drive his car over a cliff. Miss Hackett, was your father a predictable person? No. Erratic? Frustrated. He was fighting a battle to make people realize what was going on in the mayor's office. I am of the opinion that his state of mind led to his drinking and that alcohol led to his losing control of his car. Therefore, in the absence of any stated intention to commit suicide, I shall record a verdict of death by misadventure. This court is now adjourned. I'm here. I'm terribly sorry. And that goes for me too, Molly. There are some papers and things of your father's. I'll send them on. Thanks. Molly. Is there anything I can do? No. Mr. Padell, I know Dad was against you, but he believed he was doing the right thing. I'm sorry if... No, no, please. I've always respected an honorable opponent. He never touched it. He was so sure that he could expose Sam Padel. There must be a connection. Molly, it's a, a connection that'll take a lot of proving, and we can't make a move without facts. Well, is it possible that the chin could have been forced down him? It has been done before, but... Molly, are you sure that he had the letter with him that night that he left the house? No, I'm not sure of anything. Thank you. I heard about your father, Miss Hackett. I'm awfully sorry. Considering I might have stopped him. Stopped him? How? 
You mean that he was in here drinking that night? Oh, no. I mean, after closing time. I was on my way home and I saw his car. Where? Well, by the building site. You know, the new civic centre. There were half a dozen letters. One was about Sam Fidel, but the others were bills. He didn't look at them. Well, Molly, there's one from the Park 7 Cement Company addressed your father. Well, I've never heard of them. It's postmark the 12th. Meaning that he received it on the 13th, the day that he died. Yes. I think I'll pay a visit to the Park 7 Cement Company and see if anybody there can tell me why your father went to that building site. Yes, Mr. Templer. My company supplied the cement for the Seaton Dean Civic Centre. We delivered the order and received prompt payment. It was much later, Mr. Hackett came to see me. No, thank you. I prefer a cigarette. What did Hackett come to see you about? Well, he couldn't get his hands on the actual blueprint of the building, but he brought me a dozen photographs of the site and some accurate dimensions. It was instantly obvious to me there'd been vast over-ordering. You mean more cement than the building needed? Oh, about double the quantity. What does this suggest to you? Fiddling. How did they get away with it? Oddly enough, on several occasions, cement was picked up at our plant by Seton Dean Town Council lorries. Well, obviously, what was needed at the building site would be delivered there. The rest oh, was probably stored in some out-of-the-way warehouse until it could be sold. Sir Angus, what was in the letter you wrote to Hackett? Oh, details of quantities ordered and delivered. I hate to think it caused his death. It's beginning to look like it. The letter was never found, and Hackett's daughter swears he had it on him the night he died. Pity. He was racket-busting, and I wanted to help. Why do you suppose Hackett went to that building site? Oh, probably he couldn't get at the town hall copy of the specifications without tipping his hand. Perhaps he was looking for the contractor's copy or the cement orders. There were four separate ones, as I recall, but I'll check that before you leave. You're being very helpful. I wish I could do more. Or perhaps you could, if you don't mind a little irregularity. Well, that more or less ties in with your reputation, doesn't it? Sir Angus, I believe you have interests in an electrical company. Yes, I do. Francis Mann Limited. Why? The town council have advertised for electrical tenders. I need a company to put in a bid. I see. Well, that can easily be arranged. Fine. I think we'll be able to spark things up very nicely. <laughs> You, mister? Yes, I'm uh, looking for the clerk of the works. He's up on the iron. Would you call him? I'd like a word with him. Yeah. For you. Oh, <laughs> I was just looking over the site. What's your business? Electric fillings. I uh, understand you're asking for tenders. The town hall's the place for them. I know, but I like to do a little research first. Haven't I seen you around town? More than likely. Pleasure with business, that's my motto. I love the seaside. What firm do you represent? Francis Mann Electrics. See the town clerk, he'll give you all the dope. Oh, well, you're sure he's the right man to see. That is what I said. Well, uh, how about the mayor? I haven't got all day to discuss a contract. If you wish to go into it, the town hall is the place. Well, I do want to go into it. Wholeheartedly. Yes. I've got work to do. All right. I'll be seeing you.
Well, it's all yours, Lanny. Ironside called me from London. The deal's gone through. He signed with the Bellevue Trust solicitors this morning. I've got to go. The land's ours, lad. Now you give us a rattling good design for that exhibition hall. Well, I've already done some preliminary sketches. Good, good. Excuse me, Mr. Mayor. There's a Mr. Simon Templer to see you. Templer. Well, uh, you chaps finished? Oh, yes. Yes, I think so. Ask him to come in, Miss Swan, would you? Well, your speech for tonight's on the desk, Sam. I've uh, added a few more facts and figures. Behind every politician, there's a smart writer. Ah. Uh. <laughs> See you later, Sam. Goodbye, gentlemen. Goodbye. Mr. Templer. Ah, nice to see you again. Nice to see you, Mr. Mayor. Sit down. No, no thanks. You've uh, been around town three or four days now, haven't you? Yes, I originally came down to do a little fishing with Jack Bryant. Then I thought I'd combine some business with pleasure. Oh? Yes, and I'd appreciate your help. In what way? Well, you see, I uh, have interest in several companies, one of them being Francis Mann Electrics. We'd like to tender for the light fittings in the new Civic Center. Well, I'll certainly arrange for you to see Mr. Dexter, the architect, and Mr. Maxin, our clerk of works. Yes, but I... Uh, I thought I'd like to talk to you first. Afraid I don't make these decisions personally. Oh, we'd consider your support very valuable. I don't quite understand you. Mr. Mayor, we're both businessmen. And we're alone. I'd like you to swing the contract to my company. You'd like me to what? recommend Francis Mann Electrics for certain considerations. Are you offering me bribe? No, uh, just financial support. A donation of some kind to any charity. Get out! Mr. Mayor. Get out before I throw you out! I warn you, I'm heavier than a sack of coal. Heavier than George Hackett. We don't like crooks and grafters in this town. That's not what I heard. I say you're a crook. Get out! Anybody comes in here, they're fired! It's Mr. Mayor! Out! And no calls! the idea? I was... I was just feeling you out. <laughs> you certainly were. You're right, Mr. Mayor. Who told you to come in here? Well, uh, Miss Swan said, uh... Mr. Templer and I are merely having a friendly chat. Friendly? And confidential. Out! All right, Templer. Now, now what's it all about? Uh, someone's making a fortune in graft out of the new Civic Center. Can you prove that? No, but you can if you check this cement order against the copy you have in the town hall safe. Look, suppose we both go up to my house, get cleaned up, and discuss this calmly. Two grown men fighting like savages. I kind of enjoyed it. Well, so did I. Did you really stop my father? Yes, he did. Now buzz off, you two. Run off and play. Well, that's the best I can do. That's fine. It's fine. obvious to anyone who looks at you that you've been in a fight. Mrs. Fidel, I'm, I'm sorry if you disapprove. Mr. Templer, I think you're both out of your minds. Alice, 
It took this to make me understand. I checked the files. Cement orders have been altered, specifications changed. Seton Dean's paid out for almost twice the amount of cement the centre required. But, Sam, how could that have happened? Everything costs more than the original estimates these days. And I can't go around the building checking personally on every item purchased. Templar, I've tried my best to do things for this town. I know that. But, Sam, it isn't your fault. It is, you know. It's public money. I'm responsible for what's happened. A mayor who can't spot corruption can't stay in office. I'm resigning. Resigning? Sam, when things go wrong, a man can either run away and let them get worse, or he can stay and try and make them better. That's true. Who do you think could be involved? Anybody. Maxin, Larry Dexter, Oliver Greer, even Ironside. But the point is, all these men are personal friends of mine. I've known them all my life. All right. Then let me try something. Let me offer a bribe to each of the suspects. Whoever goes after it's our man. Where do we start? You say tomorrow night you're throwing a party? That's right. Who's invited? Everybody on the council. Good. Then invite me too. I'll offer up the bait and see who bites. And this afternoon you might remember to put in a good word at the council meeting for Francis Mann Electrics Limited. <laughs> Yes, you seem quite anxious to secure this contract, Mr. Templer. Naturally. I mean, no disrespect, especially as you're the mayor's guest, but quite frankly, I disapprove of social lobbying. Oh, McGreer, it's done all the time. Yes, I suppose it is. And I presume there's no harm in it, since it's the lowest bid that will win. Is it? Well, isn't it? There are other considerations. Oh? Uh -huh. Such as? Well, let me put it this way. My company is prepared to be extremely cooperative. I didn't quite understand you, Mr. Templer. Well, Alderman, suppose you, you think about it. And when you do understand me, let me know. Excuse me? Anything cooking? Only the steaks. <laughs> well, of course, there shouldn't have been a building there in the first place. I told them that. No, it might be a Ah, Mr. Templer, decided on your bid yet? No, sir. In fact, there are a few details still to be sorted out. Is there anything I can do to help? Yes. Yes, I would appreciate it if you could uh, push matters a little. It all depends on what you're pushing. I take it you mean superior quality. Mr. Dexter, you can take it any way you like. My company has very, shall I say, liberal sales policies. Mr. Templer, are you trying to buy this contract? How on earth did you get an idea like that? The question is, Mr. Templer, how did you? Nobody bit. Not even a nibble. You know, whoever this is, maybe they didn't want to risk it in the mayor's house. Or maybe he's wise to me. In a way, I'm kind of relieved. I mean, these men, they're friends of mine. Hackett was murdered. Somebody did it, Sam. Yeah, you're right. Just got to keep probing. Well, you'll uh, let me know if you get any sort of approach. Of course I will. Thanks for a fine party. I'll see myself out the back way. Good night. took the bait after all. Found this in my car. If you want a guarantee of getting your contract, bring 1,000 pounds in cash as evidence of your good faith to the building site tomorrow night at 10. Unsigned. The writing familiar? No. Templar, I promise you I'm gonna beat the living daylights out of whoever did this. And after that, I'll make sure he gets what's coming to him legally. 
Come to my office tomorrow, will you? Right after lunch. I'll have a thousand pounds ready for you. Mark notes. We'll catch him red-handed with the money on him. Good. I'll be there. Nine ninety-five. One thousand pounds. All the notes are marked, and I've got a record of the serial numbers. Good work. I've had a talk with the chief constable, and he'll have men hidden all round that building site at ten o'clock. Sam, you're a very efficient operator. You still want anything to go wrong? It won't. See you tonight, then. Now, all you have to do is say the right things, make sure he's got the money actually on him, give us a shout, and we'll grab him. Right. Oh, and, uh, Templar, will you see Molly Hackett today? Yes, as a matter of fact, I'm having dinner with her tonight. Well, would you tell her how sorry I am that I didn't listen to her father? Because he was right. I was wrong. Of course I will. I'm over here, Templar. Are you alone? Yes. Got the money? Uh-huh. Well, bring it over. I knew it. How? You were too good to be true, Sam. Too quick to pick a fight when I offered you a bribe, the Outrage Virtue Act from Madam Butterfly. Plus the fact that I figured a well-loaded gravy train like this needed high-powered dual control. As you've probably realized, the police won't be coming. So it's just you and me again. And Maxine. Well, I'm afraid he won't be much use. He's asleep. Take a look down, Sam. Nervous? Not a bit. Molly Hackett knows I'm here. No trouble. You've got plenty of enemies. You disappear. Molly Hackett starts a hue and cry, we deny everything. After all, who's going to believe her? She's her father's daughter. But they're at the building site. Hasn't the mayor called you? He said he would. What about? Well, he and Simon were going to set a trap. Half the police force have been called in. But I've just been to the police station about a traffic story. There isn't anything doing in town tonight. You're finished, Sam. There'll always be somebody around to look over the books, even when you're out of office. The books are beautifully kept. You're wrong. I'll think about that when I'm laying the foundation stone here. You just better make sure. 
It's not your gravestone. Come on, then. Come on! Talk. How much you got away with? All right. All right. I'll pay back every penny. You killed Hackett. No. No, I didn't. Sam, I want the truth. I let you drop. Please, Templar, don't. Now come on, talk, Hackett. My wrist beginning to ache. <laughs> you killed Hackett. <laughs> there'll be another election right away. The sooner the better. Well, not for me, thanks. This is where I came in. Simon, I can't ever thank you enough. You've completely vindicated Dad and exposed Sam as a thief and a killer. And also as a consummate actor. With only one role. Sam Padell as the well-meaning mayor. Cheers. Cheers.